Hello guys, Colin here and I'm with Harry from Two Notes and we've been taking uh, comments from you guys and we're going to ask about the product, the Two Notes products like yes. the Captor, uh, the Studio, the Live and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So we're going to go through your comments and uh, see what this man has to say. Cool. The first comment is from Redfox141 and wants to know how do you actually use it in detail? And I think they're talking more about the Captor but you can talk about uh, the different products. I, okay, like most of our torpedo range is the, the overall function is as a load box. So that basically allows you to dime out an amp to whatever volume you like and then record it. But each one allows you to do different things. So it's like for instance, the live and the studio allow you to uh, run ahead. So 100 watt head or uh, in the case of the studio, it's 150 watt RMS. And then you can then record a normal head into, you know, into your, your door or in, and you can reamp it or you can do whatever you want with it after you've obviously got a DI um, and you can use either the virtual cams that are built inside and you, you know, use wall of sound, a plug-in, there's loads of different things you can do. Um, in the case of the captor, the captor and the reload are the ones that are, allow you to attenuate. So the captor, which is our new one, and that allows you to basically attenuate out of the back and it also has a through output as well. On top of that, it has the DI out the front so you can then, again, the same as the studio and the live, you can record direct into your door, use wall of sound, that actually comes with 16 wall of sound uh, cabinets as well. Oh, okay. So that's, they're basically designed to help you use your tube head and maximize its potential in the best way possible without blowing your eardrums in various different scenarios. Sweet. Yeah. So when we're plugging this in, because I think people want to know as well, just when it comes to actually plugging the cables in, this is going between the head and the speaker output, like for the captor. Yeah, yeah. So, so the head then goes, so the head goes into the red output at the top. Uh, I don't know if you can tilt that so that you can see. So the head is going into that red output at the top. And then the minus 20 dB attenuation is the second cable on the, it would be your left, uh, their right. And then that goes into the cabinet. So without, so at the moment, what's the, what's the rev on at the moment? That's, that's, that's quite, yeah, so the master is quite high on that. So we would be pretty loud if we were to play. Yes. So. Then I can still talk, you can still hear me. And that's because at the moment it's in the 20 dB attenuation. So it's the same thing if you've got um, like a Fender or something like that. That's a really good example of one in America that loads of people have. But they're notorious. To get a good sound, they have to be loud. Yes. That is what allows you to do that. I mean, have you seen the master's pretty high on this at the minute? And it's totally totally like not ear splitting volume at yeah. all it's usable volume in this room it's not loud at all yeah and, and that's all from the 20 db attenuation from the captor exactly if you wanted to use the through on on the other side you can mm. you can have it as loud as you want yeah but 100 watts is is loud <laughs> yes yeah like yeah. so um i think yeah that is the rev that's the rev one so that's the 120 so i mean the mast is not all the way up but i guesstimate it being like 85 to 90 watts at the moment and we're yeah. able to talk over yeah so it's quite nice it's no problem mm. cool uh, second question comes from ptan 9 o can you ask them using their wall of sound plug-in with the captor do they work together or allow more cab options and if you don't want to use it as an analog cab sim can you put in other sims okay so that's a good one so um on the captor it has an analog cab sim built in um, and that's for both guitar and bass and it's switchable and obviously you can turn that off if you wanted to the reason why we allowed you to turn it off is because it actually comes as I said before with 16 virtual cabinets for wall of sound yeah so then yeah so it's designed basically so it's designed to, to take the wall of sound yeah it's one of its main features is to use wall of sound with it yeah. that seemed to be a big thing in the, the comments I was seeing was people are really digging the wall of sound stuff and they want to know if they can use it yeah. alongside that yeah 100% it's, it's basically what we designed is like an easy uh, functionality into using wall of sound without having to obviously get like the live or the studio or or even a reload it's it's kind of uh, a load box as just a load box yeah you know that's best basically it is it's, it's low price high quality um, and the wall of sound plugin is is free mm -hmm. you know so you can download that from our website um, and then the cabinets are on average around about six to eight euro XVAT so sure. So per cab is, is very cheap. It's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. How is it that the load simulator actually works? How does it dissipate power amp if not by turning it into a load noise? So the, so how does it work as a load box? Yeah, I think it was asking how, how attenuation actually works. You've got all this energy from the amp coming oh. out. 
and then what is it because it's supposed to go into sound from the cabinet what what is it doing to like bring down the volume where's the energy going so there's a couple of things that are uh, like to overcome when using a load box so the first one is you have to put an appropriate load back onto the head because otherwise yeah. you can damage the head so first and foremost that's always our number one goal is to make sure that, that is happening in order to do that uh, we actually use a lot of people use like a heat sink or something similar mm -hmm. to that um, we've got one I can't remember the name of it, for the life of me sat here so I'm not going to say <laughs> right. why it is but when we were sat and the first time I used it I could actually hear the captor and I could hear what I was playing on guitar mm -hmm. but I was like that's not coming out of the speakers and it definitely just sounds like it's just the head and essentially it works by simulating what a cab or a speaker would mm -hmm. but then absorbing the heat and that's the reason why the captor then gets hot so if you yeah. did put something like 120 watts straight into the captor eventually it would overheat yeah. hence the reason why it has the fan built into it yeah. and if that ever happens we actually have a safety function inside all of our uh, load boxes by which it then shuts itself down cools itself off adds to the fan obviously if that yeah. engages um but still but retains it, the load. Exactly, yeah. So you don't, have the f you don't have the fear of if it overloads, it breaks, and then your amp head has no load on it, and you're running the head to destruction. Yeah, I mean, like, modern amplifiers, a lot of them, when you are, um, when you do have it on, and it's not on standby, and you don't, you just have a cable plugged into it, and it's not plugged into the, the other side. Yeah. Some of them do have, like, a short circuit function to limit mm -hmm. any damage to them, but a lot of them don't. And that's basically what the captor does, is it always constantly adds the appropriate load, depending on what load you've bought, a 4 or 16 ohm. Um, so you'll, you'll never, ever risk any sort of damage to your cab. Sweet. Yeah, regardless. And that works the same for the live, the studio, the reload, and the captor. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. We're using the studio in the rooms right now to yeah. capture a lot of sounds, and uh, it works fantastically. Yeah, in fact, we've actually gone, because it's quite an extensive one, we've gone, <laughs> we've gone rev into the studio mm. so we can get a DI um, and I think we're using a uh, Marshall emulation in that and right. we're using a 57 and a ribbon 121 if I'm not mistaken um, and then we've gone out of the studio for the through output into the cab uh, so this captor yep. and then into the cabinet so, right yeah so we've got like so we've got everything yeah. running at once here. yeah we've basically got cab and DI and it actually sounds great as well <laughs> It's, it's a yeah. nice sound, like, and especially the cab. Like, the captain mm -hmm. doesn't, that's, that's actually a really good point. The captain doesn't depreciate your signal, for mm -hmm. one, and it doesn't colour your signal. Yes, that's an important thing for guitarists to hear. Yeah, like, so it just, it just retains your overall tone, it just attenuates it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's purely what it does. If I use the captor with the wall of sound plug-in, will I get the same tones as I would if using it with the Torpedo Studio? Okay, um, so there's very, very slight differences between them. One being, obviously, if you're using your interface, um, if you don't have a great interface or you have like an entry-level interface, that's going to affect the sound. Yeah. Um, I think the, the biggest thing to mention is that the, the Torpedo Studio is our flagship. Yeah. And the inside and the inner workings of the electronics are similar to that which you'd find in like a, a very, very high-end like analog to digital converter. Yeah. So unless you've got something that's along the same lines, the the signal is going to be better with the studio, purely for the fact that it is um, a better signal to noise ratio yeah. overall, and the captor is fully analog. The, the analog part and the digital part of the studio are completely separate as well, which then obviously allows us to have a higher signal to noise ratio. So I would say you're gonna get near enough to an untrained ear, it's, you won't be able to tell the difference. Yeah. To a trained ear, you still aren't really going to be able to tell the difference, but there'll be slight things that are very, very different, but very, very slight. So that brings me on to the question that I've got for myself is, well, we've got the captor, we've got the studio, we've got the live, we've got a whole bunch of different products here, mm -hmm. and if you can get fairly similar sounds out of them, who is each of them for? What, 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 would, get, what would I benefit from getting the studio over just getting a captor, for instance? Uh, okay, so the studio, um, the studio is for the guys that have a full studio rig. I mean, it's got word clock, it's got digital out, XLR inputs, XLR outputs, the whole rig, everything that you could possibly need for absolutely everything, no matter what you need, aside from attenuating to a cab. 
Yes. So that would be, if you want to attenuate to a cab and you that was paramount for you, then the reload of the captor. Because they are made for both live use, the use for reamping, that kind of thing where you can't crank up your amp, where the studio and the live are more for the studio, like professional studio user. Um, in the case of live, that's more for uh, like a semi-professional slash intimate upwards for a musician. Um, I mean, there's a really good example from Ryan Bruce, who obviously yes. unfortunately isn't here at the moment, Sadly, but like, yes. he's currently using the Torpedo Live as his IEM for his in-ear monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, and him and his guitarist, Tony, uh, who I used to work with as well, used to ask loads of questions about it, but they're now using that um, and they love it. And you can do something similar with, with actually running the signal. Instead of to your in-ear monitoring, you can actually run it to the desk and then blend. Yeah. Both an on like an on stage cab sound with using the through output from the live or the studio, mm -hmm. um, and then having the the live signal and the, the the virtual cabinet, so you basically recreate it and blend the two together. So that's kind of what that's for. Um, yeah. And then I guess a good way to um, to describe like the capture and the cab. Yes. So that's one we haven't mentioned yet. The cab. Mm -hmm. So the capture is the load box part of the live. The virtual cabinet side, the digital side of it, yeah. is the cab. Right. So okay. the cab is kind of there for like, if you have a fly rig, you've got a preamp pedal or something like that, you want to use that. Mm. You can then put that down. Continue. I just have to oh, add, add, hi, hi guys. It's nice to have you on a video. Yeah, same here. You're almost the same. I'm still small. Yeah, I was about to yeah, say, yeah, tiny. We're if, tiny. If Guillaume finds out that I'm, I, I was switching and I didn't jump in here and do the pitch, He's gonna kill me. <laughs> you asked about the difference, and um, okay. and um, wait a second. The studio is stereo. The studio is stereo, which is uh, studio a is stereo, huge which I thing. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. The studio, studio has is. stereo line inputs. Yes. So mm -hmm. stereo line outs, and through the software in the in the Warner Sound software, you also have stereo. Stereo. Yeah, yeah. But the studio That's can do right. stereo standalone. How many camps have you used in the wall of sound? Because that's something I haven't mentioned. Wall of sound? N none. I don't even have that. You know why? Because I have yeah, a studio. Uh, so I do that hardware. And mm -hmm. you can actually have a, a cab on the left mm -hmm. with a certain mic in certain room, completely different setup than on the right, mm -hmm. or blend them. So it's two independent engines in yes. the studio. But how about stereo pedals? Stereo, mm -hmm. uh, Leslie cap simulator, stereo delay, stereo yes. reverbs. When you have a pedal, what I sometimes do for a demo is I go pre, uh, uh, FX send for my amp into the stereo pedals, but then I need two of the same amps. And I do mm -hmm. a cop out, I go line into the studio, which has power amp simulation. Yes, it does. Yeah. There's it does. a huge amount that we could cover in this video. I mean, Wall of Sound, yeah. uh, Wall of Sound is a good one for that, so like the studio you can do, as you said, you can do two different caps, two and, different microphones. And that, that, gives you, that gives you stereo, but yes. something that is important about the, uh, the captor, for those people out there who have a torpedo <laughs> studio and think, I don't need a stinking captor because <laughs> I have the best one of them. Yes, you do, because the studio only has one load box. Mm -hmm. So it's stereo, but you can only hook up one amp oh, to it. Oh, right, yes. yeah. Okay, so uh, you can't do stereo amping, but use your amp, have a load box and do that on the left, get a captor Capture. for your second amp, use that as the load box, line out into the studio, and there you have a full stereo setup that you can take live without your computer. Thank you very much. One thing to mention on that, though, is that the studio is 150 watt RMS, whereas the captor are 100. So that would be the one thing is to mention that. Anyone who uses amps that are more than 20 watts are ridiculous <laughs> people anyway. <laughs> and now I just... Uh, got hate from everyone on your channel, right? No, I don't think so. I would, I would support you on that no, one. No, I mean, <laughs> they should support me on that I one. Like this 40. is a fine amp at 120, but I mean, <laughs> is anyone going to crank this at 120 watts? If they... Mm, no. If you, if you have a studio, then you no. can. No. If you have a studio, you can. No. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, let, let me argue this. No. <laughs> okay, continue. Okay, I, I think we should wrap this up. This, yeah. is, this has been plenty. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much no, for, no uh, for, for discussing this. I think people are going to be very interested. And uh, if you want to check out all the two notes stuff, I'll have links in the description box underneath this video. Um, thank you. Yeah, uh, no keep it loud, and we'll see you later.